I am DM Zone. This is Gamers Oasis. Let's get into this. Okay, guys, we're going to uh, make some characters for uh, original old school d and I'm going to have to make a few adjustments here, get my dice out, but we're going to go ahead and do this. Okay, guys, got my dice out finally. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what I'm working with here. All right, guys, I got my dice out here. As you can see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, roll some characters up real quick. Original old d and um, you did it with 3D6 and you did it in order. Now, this here happens to be uh, a couple Christmas gifts all together um, over a couple years, actually. You can see I got me a super fancy case here. And that uh, weight is not that of a normal dice set. That is actually a uh, set of the heavy metal dice uh, for D&D. &D, and this is two... Two sets plus um, um, two uh, ten piece sets, and then two of the uh, D uh, D six sets. And you might ask, "Well, Zone, why would you do that?" Well, that's why. Now I got me a ten dice fireball in my thing, and I can go ahead and roll that out. I think that's pretty cool, personally. So that's why you do it. Let's go ahead and do this. We got 3D6. We're going to go ahead and uh, give this some rolls. All right. Let's see what we get for the first character, shall we? We're going to do a total of four characters. Let's see if I get this situated. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll over here so you can see the rolls. So. That is a six, because there's the one. So that is an 11. So back in this day, they had strength, dex, if I'm right, int, then they had wisdom. They had con and charisma. So this first one is going to be an 11 strength. All right. Next up is going to be uh, dexterity. This is an 11 again. This one here is a 12. We have a very um, average stat character. Ah, here we go. Finally, something with good. This would probably be a good cleric in my guess. So we have a 15 wisdom. Cleric, for sure. Let's see what your con is and what your charisma is. So your constitution is a 9. So, again, we're looking at the low side of average, but that's average. That's a minimum stat in uh, some versions of D&D &D for dwarf. And we have a 9 charisma. Absolutely a cleric. All right, next character. All right, we're going to start off with a 13. That's decent. All right, here we go. So we don't quite have... We're getting to the stuff. This is a 14, but that's a 14 agility or dexterity. That's pretty nice. So I have a 13 strength and a 14 uh, dexterity. Um, that could be a couple things. All right. We have a low intelligence. So this is, well, not low. I guess that's average. And 
we have again average for wisdom hopefully get some con bonus here <laughs> no, we did not we are suffering negatives I do believe I see you ranged in your future ah but we have a decent charisma 13 charisma I see this as a thief okay third roll Oh, <laughs> an 18. Wow. Okay, for uh, strength, I'm guessing that will be a fighter or dwarf or something. <laughs> All right, 18. Well, let's hope the dex is good. We're going to go with that. Oh, come on, big physical stats. Nope. Eight. Okay. Bit of a glass cannon as far as AC goes. Let's see how intelligence is. Not really worried about intelligence. Now, of course, we got an 11 there. Um, so, stats in uh, original Dungeons & Dragons were not as important. However, an 18 in strength for any sort of melee was... More significant than really an 18 anywhere else except for maybe con. Sp oh, is wisdom. 14 wisdom. Interesting. 14 wisdom. This is the big one. Uh, of course not. Six. This is absolutely a glass cannon. With low charisma. So this would be a fighter. All right. Last but not least, this is a nine. That is an eleven. This is a seven. Wow. All right. Well, high dex, uh, high stats, and 11. Womp, womp, womp. Wisdom of a 12. All right. Cleric, maybe? Do we need really another cleric? Hmm. Wow, a six con. My highest con is a nine. I only have one character that could be a uh, cleric. Or a dwarf, I mean. And then we have a ten. Okay. So, let me switch this real quick. Okay, guys, so here's the problem. This last character, his best stat would be a cleric. I don't really want two clerics. I am going to run some dungeon stuff. Um, so I'm going to make him a cleric. But I'm going to go ahead and change this first one to a dwarf. Now, why would I have a 15 for uh, that and then go with a dwarf? I don't want two clerics, really. There isn't a whole lot of difference. Uh, for example, this is just an XP bonus at this level. Uh, you don't get bonus spells. You don't get bonus. There's not really a huge reason to uh, have that 15 there. Um, it's not like it affects a whole lot. Having a 12 is at least something. Um, this last character is just terrible. Um, yeah. But having a dwarf in the party gives you a second melee. Um, this could this third this fourth character would be really just a real weak 
uh, melee of some nature, like a halfling or maybe a fighter. I don't think he can qualify for anything else. None of the characters I have can qualify for a mage, or, or excuse me, for an elf, for example. Um, but, um, the, yeah, you'll see what I'm saying. And I'll go ahead and play a, a game with this, and we'll see how this works out um, to kind of give you a feel for things. Okay, guys, so I have a, a, as much hard time following along sometimes with the different editions as anyone else. I consider myself pretty um, versed on these type of things. And after spending some time away uh, in between what was going to be a two-part series, um, I looked at the original rules again, and I realized I was applying some uh, BX, or Basic Expert for Mold Day in 1981 uh, version of the rules to the game. So I feel like I would leave this in instead of redoing this whole thing because I feel like it explains it's okay. It's, it shows that it's okay to make a mistake and to do these things. And really, there is no one way uh, that the original Dungeons & Dragons was played back then. Because the rules are loose. They're, they're, not, um, uh, they're not a very tight-formed rule set like 3.5 or 4th edition would be. 5th um, edition kind of is in the spirit of this. But really, in 4th edition, they got really wound pretty tight. Same thing with uh, 3.5. But all right, let me go ahead and get into this. Okay. So I've done some, <clears throat> per se, homework. Let me find a place to set this down. We have my... I'm going to switch my camera. Still working on the lighting over here. Well, oh, it's froze again. Okay, guys, so I, as you can see here, I've got my original character sheet, uh, well, where I write down the stats. And now I'm going to go ahead and try and get this onto what would be like a character sheet. Back in the day, they didn't have actual character sheets. They went with uh, just regular sheet paper, and you wrote your stats down. So I've got the basic things you need to know there, and I'm going to go ahead and do that in pencil. They didn't have necessarily mechanical pencils back in the day, but they were mech they recommended a number two pencil, which just would be the same type of lead. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about where I want to go with this. I'm going to put up some slides. Okay, so we have uh, an area of the book called Explanation of Abilities. I'm going to talk more about this when I go into the actual OD&D, &D, original D&D. &D. Um, but you can see here uh, it's based upon the class you are and, the cla and your prime requisite. Uh, dwarves, elves, and uh, fighters are all going to have prime requisites of strength. And then uh, elves and magic users are going to have prime requisites of intelligence. Clerics have prime requisites for uh, wisdom. Okay, so there are six stats, but really you can only move the stats around the first three. The, there really isn't more to that. And as you can see here, um, there is no... Uh, Thief. Um, I ended up having to, <clears throat> I had their slip of the memory, I guess you could say. I knew that thieves were in original OD&D, &D, but they were not in the original core three books. And I should have stated that prior, that I'd be willing to use uh, characters from outside the original three books to be more clear. But I am going to use a thief, um, and that is pulled from the... Um, Supplement 1 Greyhawk book. Okay, so let's go ahead and look into this. The first character, the dwarf, uh, he has a strength of 11. Now his prime requisite is going to be strength. They get bonus XP for having a higher strength. Um, they also get some bonus XP, or not bonus XP, they get some bonus stats for having a higher strength. So when you get to a 13 to 15 strength, you get plus one to hit. If you have a 16, you get plus one to damage. And then it goes up to like 17 and 18 and yada, yada, yada. Um, and eventually, if you're a fighter, um, which a dwarf would be considered a fighter, so would an elf, you actually can have percentile strength, uh, which 
didn't come out initially. That was a thing, again, that came out in the supplements afterward. A pure original Dungeons & Dragons you did not have percentile. Most people think, though, that uh, percentiles didn't come out until AD&D. I literally thought that until here recently when I saw it. I was like, holy cow. Okay. So, now we know that we're going to try and move its strength up to a 15 so I can get that bonus XP. Okay, so um, looking at my notes here. So I can trade uh, strength here three for one uh, for the primary of wisdom. Okay, I can trade intelligence here for uh, fighters and clerics can use their prime requisite areas of strength and wisdom respectively on a two for one basis. Okay, so if I were to go ahead and take its intelligence to a 10, I can move its strength to a 12. Okay, if I were to go ahead and take its intelligence to an 8, I can move its uh, strength to a 13. Well, that's pretty solid. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to make that an 8, and we're going to make that a 13. Okay, now let's go down here to Wisdom. Okay, it may be, uh, Wisdom may be used on a 3 per 1 basis by fighters and by a 2 for 1 basis on Magic users. So we're talking about uh, fighters currently, because we're talking about Dwarves. So again, we're talking about a 2 for 1, or a 3 for 1, excuse me. So if I were to take it down to a 12 wisdom that would bring it to a 14 strength and if I were to go to a 9 wisdom that would bring it to a 15 strength so even though this character rolled stats in order and even though um, it was basically a solid cleric it doesn't look like it's a terrible uh, dwarf alright so with a 15 strength I get plus 1 to hit um, I get my XP bonus. Very nice. Okay. Uh, what do I lose from the intelligence dropping from a 12 to an 8? Um, the rules are kind of vague in this area, but essentially you lose bonus languages. So I don't have the ability to be as well versed in language as I am. I'm not illiterate. I don't know. It's like not like I don't know uh, anything outside of Dwarf. I just don't necessarily know like the bonus bonuses of languages. I think I would know dwarf and common. I probably wouldn't know elf, probably wouldn't know goblin, so on and so on. Those would come at like 10 and higher levels. Okay, so wisdom. What do you lose from going from a 15 wisdom to a 9 wisdom? Actually, absolutely nothing. There's no stat benefits for a dwarf, a cleric, or anything, except for if you're a cleric, you lose your XP bonus. Um, where it would hurt you is if you're ever asked to roll below your stat, which is a way some tests are done. Uh, you now have six less stat points to roll under. So, But you have gained them in strength, and you're probably going to do more strength-based things than you are wisdom-based things. So I feel like this is a good uh, version of it. So let me go ahead and write this down. All right, so while I was away, I thought about uh, names. And this guy is going to be a male. i put that up here. And he's going to be named uh, Stigoth. S-T-I. Oops, no L. G-G-U-T-H. And uh, we're going to go with something dwarven like Copper Axe. Get a little cheesy with it. So we have Stigeth Copper Axe. Class uh, Dwarf Fighter. Now, I'm going to make this distinction here, that he's both a dwarf and he's a fighter. Um, all dwarves are fighters, not all fighters are dwarves. Um, this is not actually class as uh, race, or race as class yet. That is actually in a later edition of the game, believe it or not. Okay.
So now we have a 15 strength. Give me a plus one, plus zero. Okay. We have a dexterity of 11. Gives plus zero. We have an eight intelligence, which gives us nothing. We have a nine wisdom, which gives us nothing. We have a nine con, which is plus zero to um, hit points. Let me look up something real quick here. Okay, <clears throat> so a nine on constitution is absolutely the minimum for this uh, bracket, but you get a 60 to 90% chance of survival. So I'm assuming that's supposed to be 60. So I'm going to put 60% here. That is like a, in modern day, we call it like system shock. You get, uh, uh, you're killed, you're brought back from the dead, you have a 60% chance of surviving that. You have, uh, you're turned to stone, you're brought back from stone, you have a 60% chance of surviving that, so on and so on. If you have over a 14, it's considered to be uh, withstand adversity, whatever that might mean. Okay, so prime requisites. Uh, if you have a 15 or more in your prime requisite, in this case strength, you get a 10% XP bonus. So I'm going to put XP down here. I'm going to put plus 10% because that's what he has. All right. Now he has a 9. Is that right? Yes, he has a 9 charisma. This means he has a max hireling of three. And he has no bonus for loyalty. Now let's go ahead and take a look at saves. So dwarves are considered fighters at four levels higher. So a first level fighter would be a fifth level dwarf. Or a first level dwarf would be a fifth level fighter. Fifth level fighter <clears throat> is in the second bracket here. So that's going to be a 10. And then we have an 11. And then we have a 12. We have a 13. And we have a 14. Versus the 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So a big difference. So Thacko is going to be a 19. Thacko stands to hit armor class 0. All characters will have a Thacko. We'll get to armor class in a second. Uh, hit points are going to be a D8. Let me go ahead and roll that real quickly. I need a good roll here. I am going to re-roll ones, just so you know. Ooh. There we go. That is an eight. You can see there is the, where's that? There is no other eight. This is, there's a one and that's the eight. So this is an eight. So max hit points is uh, extremely important. Uh, considering I don't have constitution as a very high stat for the rest of my characters. All right, so open doors. Okay, so it doesn't really get into it exactly. You have to actually go all the way over to book three, as you can see here, to get into uh, opening doors. Um, everyone has basically a one and two chance. They do suggest that smaller characters, maybe halflings, could only do it on one in six chance. Um, a dwarf uh, gets a bonus to, they note slanted passages, traps, shifting walls, and new construction in underground settings. So here, noise. Uh, dwarves don't have any special benefit for that. So they're going to be a two in six chance. Secret door. So yes and no. Well, it's probably the same as a, an elf. As is very common in this uh, version of the game, you run into contradictions. Okay, so it says here uh, in number three, uh, they note slanting passages, trapping, uh, shifting walls, and new construction in underground settings. Uh, but that doesn't give any statistics. When you go over to secret passages, it says that <clears throat> secret passages will be located on a roll of one or two on a d6 by men, dwarves, and halflings. 
elves will be able to locate them on a 1d4. It very clearly says that they are found on a 1 or 2 by men, dwarves, and halflings. But I would think, turning back over here, uh, they note the slanting passages, traps, shifting walls, and new construction in underground settings. I would assume that is a 1 on a D4 and 4. So 1 and 4 when you're dealing with stone stuff. Shifting walls, new construction, that type of stuff. Shifting wall on wood, dwarves don't get the benefit. Okay, they're able to speak uh, gnome, kobold, goblin, in addition to the usual tongues. So they say that because you're able to see this, you can still speak gnome, goblin, and kobold um, in addition. So I probably will put over here languages. They speak common, dwarf. And I'm going to give him one less of these. I'm going to have him speak gnome and goblin. Just so we have some uh, representation of a lower intelligence. A cost, shall we say. Okay, so starting gold is 3d6 times 10. Okay, so here is my 3d6. So I have a total of uh, 90 coins. So <clears throat> starting with 90. Now we're going to come over here to gear. Okay, so for this purpose, I'm not going to do all the gear. I'm going to do that off screen a little bit. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get this basically up. So we have... We have a... We're going to go to chain mail. Okay which will drop me to like AC5, I wanna say. We're gonna go to the shield. Okay, so we got a hand axe. Hand axe is gonna be Plus one, and it's going to do a D6 damage. Hand axe only costs three gold. Shield is 10, and chain metal is 30. <clears throat> so he will have spent uh, 43 gold already, leaving him with 47. And he hasn't really bought anything yet. Still needs rope, sacks, pittance, hammer, that type of stuff. Torches, food. Yeah, we'll get to that. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with my camera here. As soon as I alt-tab out of it, it's like it locks it all up. It's very confusing to me. Also, you can see I'm in the same room, and one camera is very brighter than the other. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that either. Okay, so let me come over here real quick. Um, we have a hand axe. There's a plus one to hit, T6 damage. We have chain mail, we have shield. We have that. So, uh, at risk of freezing up that one camera again. Okay, so uh, chain mail is a five. Shield brings it to a four. Some people might ask, why do you go down versus up like you do in current uh, editions of the game? 
Um, this actually has a lot to do with the original uh, concept of the founders. Um, the first game they made before Dungeons and Dragons, Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax, was called Don't Give Up the Ship. So, lower armor classes and that, because of class two, class two, one. You get the drill idea. So that is probably why they chose to go down versus up. But it'll be AC4. Now, what does that mean? If he wants to hit himself, what does he have to roll? Well, okay. So the way you'd figure that out is he has a Thacko of 19. That means that if he rolls a Thacko of 19, he hits armor class 0. So if he rolls an 18, he hits armor class 1. If he rolls a 17, that's armor class 2. If he hits armor class of uh, 3, he rolls a 16. And uh, 15 gives you a 4. So he has to roll a 15 on the dice to hit himself. Gives you an idea. Well, he's got plus 1, so he needs a 14. But yes, that is how hard it is for a mob or a creature to hit him, essentially. Okay, I'm going to finish out the rest of this off camera, uh, but you'll see it when he comes back up. One character done. All right, next character. Here's just my little notes over here slid into the frame. That's unfortunate. Next character is going to be the thief. Okay, and you can see here, this is his starting stats. Now again, we only have a 14 in dexterity. <clears throat> Thieves are in the original three books, so you have to go outside of them to find what their prime requisite is and how to increase it. Thieves are very specific uh, because it takes two stats to raise uh, dexterity by one. So in uh, this case, you have to lower the intelligence by two and the wisdom by one to get one point of dexterity. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. Because for sure we're doing that. All right, so if I wanted to do it again and go to a 16, which could have value, I would need a six intelligence. I don't want to do that. And nine wisdom is whatever, but I, I, it's still the formula you have. Now, luckily, a seven con means you don't have negatives. We'll save that for later. So we're going to have a 13 strength. Remember, 13 strength gives you um, a plus one to uh, hit. Dexterity of 15. Okay, so in this version of the game, having a dexterity of 12 or higher uh, gives you plus one to ranged attacks. So, this is actually going to affect my... No, it will not affect my dwarf. But it will affect my uh, thief. So, he will have uh, plus one to range and there apparently is no bonus to initiative so we'll keep that in mind intelligence is going to be an eight again no negatives no whatevers wisdom of a nine again that's going to be plus zero constitution of seven barely stays within the plus zero range very close to get a neg one now a charisma of 13 very different thing. Okay, so a Charisma 13 gives a loyalty or <clears throat> five henchmen with a loyalty rating of plus one. So they will be more likely to have people follow in that situation. <clears throat> so, very confused by this. I don't apparently see any specific saves for Thief. Um, I'm going to have to research that. So for right now, I'm going to leave that blank. Okay, find traps again is not something we're doing in this edition of the game. Open doors. <clears throat> we have it in a one or two. Hear noise currently is a one or two. But that is an ability that goes up with thieves. Thieves is one of those things, and I'm going to do a, a video talking specifically about thieves probably. 
But this is a thing that um, they really, really, really... Um, there's a lot to Thieves. This edition of the game really added a lot, and I don't think they covered everything completely. Secret Door, again, um, they have a one or a two, depending on race, because you can also be an elf, you can be a dwarf, and you can be a halfling. So you expand what the uh, demi-humans, as they are called, what they can do. Uh, thieves only get a D4 hit points. <clears throat> So, here goes nothing. So, we have a three, because that's what's on top, as you can see here. A three. So, they have three hit points. That go is going to be a 19 again. This we're going to figure out probably going to be first level human or, or fighter because it refers to them as being a, a man for the chainmail rules. Okay, so um, at third level, their hear noise goes up to a one and three on a d6. But they also have, so we have XP first plus 10%. I'm going to leave some spaces here. And I'm going to go with open locks remove trap. And we're going to have pickpocket Move silent. Hide. Wow. In shadow. And they didn't have <coughs> climb wall yet or sheer surface. Which is crazy to me. Okay. So, open locks is a base 15%. If you were the demi humans, you'd actually have bonuses. Humans do not get any bonuses. Find or move traps is a 10%. Then, uh, pickpocket. Ooh, wait. Or move silent. Or hide in shadows. Okay, so now we're going to run the first little bit. Um, or we move silent or pick pockets. Uh, one, two, three. It's going to be. Um, make sure I'm. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> one, two, three. It's going to be uh, pick pockets. Uh, four, five, and six would be move silent. We are a stealthy. Not a. We are not a cut purse. We are a burglar. So, this will be a twenty percent and a ten percent, and that will go up with levels. Um, you have to go a long, long ways. See one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, you start to get some, you know, mid fifties. So now we have this. Uh, what else do we have over here? Oh yes, we have our coin. So we're going to have gold, silver. Copper. Yes, I know I'm leaving out platinum. I figure I'm going to redo my character sheet by the time I actually need that. All right, here's for the 3d6. So we have 9 again. That'd be 90 yet again. Now, I have less I need. I can't use shield. I can only use uh, leather. So gear. Move 
get down to space. We'll go with leather. Okay, so interestingly, they talk about the fact that climb uh, sheer surfaces is a thing, <clears throat> but they don't give any of the stats for it, which is kind of crazy. Okay, so they're able to use any uh, melee just like they are in BX, which is a very specific thing to older editions. They're only able to use swords and daggers, though, that are magic. They can't use hammers or axes and that type of stuff. That's the purview of other uh, classes. I guess that was their way of making sure everyone got their fair shot at things. So, we're going to go ahead and go with leather. Uh, we're going to go with a dagger because daggers and great swords do the same damage in this game. Again, that is a later edition of the game that separates that out. And we're going to go with a short bow. Okay, so we have our dagger. I get plus one to hit from strength, and I do a d6 damage. And we have our bow. Plus one. Let me do this differently. Oh my goodness. D6. D6. Alright. I don't get strength for anything, and I don't get strength added to range attack. So they both do a D6 damage. They both get plus one to hit. Pretty universal. Actually not a bad class. Um, I could consider making him an elf. Um, but then he'd be a tri-class, and he would level very slowly. Thieves level fast. I want a thief to be a thief. Therefore, I don't want to do the, the multi-class, I guess would be how you consider They consider it a dual class. Um, it just comes out weird. I'll do the rest of his stuff later. Oh, name. Uh, this guy is going to be a male again. And his name's going to be Osgard. Osgar. Osgar. I'm going to do the last name of Miller. Now, why the last name of Miller? Well, that's very specific to my particular world. Um, the Millers are often found in my world as NPCs. And they are kind of like the Smiths. Uh, you can trace them by lineage. You can find them all over the place. Um, they're usually in establishments, bar owners, clerics, this type of stuff. So they are the Baggins of the Shire. They are the ones that go out exploring, shall we say. So... Let's go ahead and move on. Next up is the fighter. The fighter with an 18 strength. Now, like I said, you do get percentile. So here is... Boop, 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 boop. All right, here it comes. We're looking for something in the ah uh, uh range. Okay, 52. Well, okay, so we got 1852, as you saw. This one here is going to give plus three to hit and plus three to damage. Oh, man. Uh, a normal 18 is plus two, plus three. So 18 uh, slash one. Uh, uh, 1 to 50 is uh, plus 2 plus 3 just like a normal 18 strength and uh, 
1851 to 1875 is the uh, plus three, plus three. And it goes all the way up from there. Now this is, oh my gosh. So this is, I, I'm really sorry about this computer thing. I do not know what's going on. Why is this camera lagging? I'm so frustrated right now. Okay. So this stat is not terribly impressive, but it is impressive because of the scale of things. Um, frankly, um, Gary Gygax was known for favoring melee classes. Um, I think you see that when you look at the fighters. Um, the fighter is a very powerful character with the bonus of strength and damage and all types of stuff. Mages do come up in the end, but there's a lot of love for fighters right there first level that bonus to hit that bonus to damage brutal okay so let's work on character name what is this character name? i, I want to make this one a female get ourselves a female in here and uh let's go with edith okay so we have edith the female they're human. I'm not going to go with uh, uh, that. I'm going to go with Edith Lawfrick. Lawfrick is also a fairly common name in my uh, world. So this is going to be a fighter. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this over here. Um, I can only raise strength. <clears throat> I already have an 18. Therefore, I have no prerequisites to shift around. So there's nothing there. I kind of didn't say that early, but that's what it is. So we have an 8 dexterity. Would love to have that higher. We have an 11 intelligence. We have a 14 wisdom, which will not do anything but give her, her a better chance to make saves. Unfortunately, we have a 6 con. That is brutal. And I have a seven charisma. All right. <clears throat> if we're going to get important here, we need to get this a high hit point. All right. So I'm rolling a D8 for health, for rolling a D8 for hit points. Here's for a big roll. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it again? Wow. Okay. So. Hit points would normally be eight, but I have a neg one from Khan, so that's actually a seven. The importance of that seven, though, is absolutely insane. All right, so we have plus zero. We have no bonuses. We have no bonuses. We have a neg one. Oh, I got to look up what a seven, three, and flat. Okay, so I get plus three from damage. That's going to be a five, a, a one to five. One to five chance to open doors. Basically, she needs to roll six to fail. Here, noise, she's still a one and two. Uh, secret door, she's still a one or two. None of that. All right, we're going to roll. Let me get the stats real quick. Save throws. So a fighting man, in this case we'll just say a fighting person, uh, has a 12 has a 13 has a 14 has a 15 and has a 16 so <clears throat> clear difference between her and a dwarf a dwarf has much better saves uh, she has not that go is still going to be a 19 because um, everyone starts at a 19 um, she is going to get a XP bonus of 10% um, because of her strength. 
and we're going to get to weapons so we're going to go with probably we don't have I'll probably go spear or sword maybe I don't know the thief can use a sword I'll probably go spear so I'm just going to write spear here and I'll get to that in a second it's going to be plus three to hit it's going to be a d6 plus three damage I'm going to give, him, give her a longbow. Which will have plus zero and be a D6 damage. Because she's got a range. Those are for sure going to be things we want. Now let's go ahead and roll money. Oh, we got good. Oh my goodness. 14 that's 140 gold okay so okay so we have gear we're going to start off with plate mail and that's crazy. That's 50 gold. We're going to have a shield. And I want to say a spear. Is not very much. One. So they never really, so they never clearly defined what a helmet was for. I'm going to give her a helmet though. I always assumed that it was for like um, uh, being able to uh, like avoid uh, certain types of attacks to the head type of thing. Kind of gets a little weird in the Blackmore edition, uh, Supplement 2, where it has hit locations, and that probably has more to do with that than this. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and add a helmet just because I have the extra funds, basically. A spear is super cheap. We'll worry about the longbow later. Longbow is 40. So again, she's going to be pretty hyper-focused. So, plate mail is 50. Longbow is 40. That is 90. Shield is 10. That is 100. Helmet is 10. Spear is that. So, it's, <clears throat> leaves, with 20, leaves her at 29 gold. And mind you, she is a fighter. Oh, I never wrote down uh, my thief's AC. So leather is AC7, and I think, and plate mail with shield is going to be AC2. So the thief is going to be AC7, and she's going to be AC2. Massive, massive difference. So complete total thug over here she has 29 gold and I'll worry about the little fineries of things that she wants afterwards last but not least is the cleric now I debated on the cleric to uh, make him a um, I debated to make him a druid or not I decided not to do that. The cleric name I went with is Brith. B-Y-R-T-H. Uh, be a male. Now, um, Brith does not sound like any of the other ones we've had. We have had uh, Edith. We've had uh, St uh, Stigith for the dwarf. And Osgar for the, the human thief. 
um, Brith is going to be a different uh, group of humans than the other two. Um, and uh, to represent that, I'm going to have a little bit different last name. Brith is going to have a last name of Lloyd. Okay, guys, so now we got Berth Lloyd, cleric. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get into his stats. Uh, as you can see here, his main stat is wisdom. His primary stat is going to be wisdom. So it'd be nice if that was higher. If I could get three points out of that, I could get a 10% bonus to XP. So if I get one more point out of his uh, wisdom, bring it to a 13 then he'll get a 5% bonus to XP versus having no bonus to XP I don't know looking at his stats if I'm going to be able to get him to a um, to a 15 to get that full 10% his stats are pretty tough um, let me take a look at what I can do here so I can do three for one for strength I would take my strength down to a six, which would actually give me a neg one to hit. I could take my seven intelligence to a four, which would basically make me illiterate. And I can change my wisdom for wisdom. Nope, can't even do that. So I can't adjust my constitution. I can't adjust my dexterity. I can't adjust my charisma. So what that means is that um, I either have to take a neg one dexterity to get five percent more XP, or not neg one to my to hit and damage, um, or keep that and just be five percent less XP. So two thousand. Uh, experience the first level means I need to get an extra hundred I don't think it's worth it um, it's I don't know if this character is ever going to get ninth level if it's ever going to get close to a million XP um, you know a million XP you know hundred thousands a lot mm. fifty thousands a lot um, I guess I just have to pay for that then and know how to go there. So we'll just keep these stats the same. So we have a 9, we have an 11. If I could change dexterity, I would, but I didn't have that in the cards back then. Uh, an intelligence of 7, we have a wisdom of 12, we have a con of 6, <clears throat> and a charisma of 10. All right, and that's the end of that for that group of characters he'll have a 19 Thacko he gets a d6 hit points Ooh, here we go I need something good five okay so with a five that would drop down to a four um, not overly great um, so he still needs a a uh, one or a two still needs a one or a two <clears throat> if his strength would have dropped down to a six he would have only been able to open doors on a, a one find secret passages and all that still going one or a two and this doesn't exist we'll get the ac in a second all right let me take a look at save throws clerics uh what first to fourth level Get the same save throws so we're going to start off with an 11 and we have a 12 we have an 11 we have 14 and we have a 12 so they have different uh, saves than the melee classes do so good to go all right let's go ahead and roll 3d6 to see 
what we got going on for um, uh, coins is how much uh, uh, gold he'll start with. Man, life is just not liking this dude. He is 100 gold, though. XP plus 0%. Just so I make sure I know. Not times 0. Plus 0. So we have gold. We have silver. And copper. So, gear. Um, he's going to buy some holy symbols and probably some other holy stuff. That would make sense. So, I'm not going to go too heavy. I'm not going to give him a plate. I'm pretty close to giving him plate but we're not. We're going to go with chain mail. We're going to go with the shield. Mace. Since I'm not going to give him plate mail, I will give him a helm. little helmet and we know we're going to go with a leather backpack and a wooden holy okay so I'll figure out what that is in a second. Uh, his, ar his armor class, though, is going to be a four. He has first level, so he has no spells. He will get spells in the future. Yes, that is still true. <laughs> Even in uh, original Dungeon Dragons, uh, they got zero uh, spells at first level. All right, so let me go ahead and explain this. This guy will come over here and go with the rest of them. <clears throat> this here uh, was a thumbnail. Let me turn this this way so you can see it. Was a thumbnail I used in a prior video. But this is going to be the start of uh, my, this is my session zero thumbnail. Uh, this would be my start of my dungeon. Um, this was be this will be a known map that will be given to the party. They'll know where the dungeon is. They'll go there, that type of stuff. And then from where it goes here, I don't know. So when you see the thumbnail with the dungeon map and it's ever growing, just realize it's me over here drawing it out, and it's going to be based on a random dungeon design. Okay, so just know that it's going to be based on a random dungeon design. Where am I getting this random dungeon design? Well, in Strategic Review, uh, issue number six, I believe it was. I'll have a link down to it down below. Um, Gary Gygax has a solo D&D &D, uh, dungeon builder where you can build a dungeon and play by yourself, essentially. Um, I'm going to be using other tools. This is all kind of a melting sandbox. I mean, you can look at the D30 sandbox system. You can look at uh, Nave. You can look at, um, oh, there's a, 10 books I have on this. Um, okay, guys, so I'm not really going to go into the system I, I use with this until I kind of go through them all and uh, decide what I like, what I don't like. Um, if I put anything together, I'm sure I'll let you guys know. Um, so far from what I've seen, there's not a thing that runs well for what I do. So we'll just kind of go from there. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I'm going to be doing this in a dungeon crawl, and then I'll be doing some hex crawl exploration in this type of stuff. And um, you've seen 
Uh, maybe you haven't seen my hex map stuff. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get those. And then uh, I went down to the Walmart and picked this up. And this will be my nice little backdrop with my world map on it. Probably be sitting back here on days when I'm playing. But my hex maps. In an, un <clears throat> in an unrelated note, I have been doing a hex map for um, a different thing. And this here is the hex map I have. So I'll be cutting out the hexes um, and then putting them on here as I explore. So basically, the inside of this is going to be nothing but hex map. And then we have a start location. And then we're just going to kind of build it out and go from there. And if you're wondering if I have enough hex map stuff, uh, yeah, I have plenty. So I got a couple hexes going on right now. Um, Coming out around this time, if not a little after this, I've got my uh, Gary Gygax 75 challenge I'm doing. And that's actually one that's being done in a sci-fi setting in space um, for probably additional difficulty, I might add. Um, I have the game I'm playing with my daughter, um, who is seven, just turned seven. Um, so it's going to be a very simple game. I'm going to be playing that game offline i will talk about the game uh on the channel i don't want to necessarily put her on camera though um and then i'm going to be doing that that's uh that's actually my actual home world game uh, that i've been playing since about 98 um Really, 98, 97, I started to build my own homeworld that is part of the Southern Kingdom. Uh, if you go on Twitch, you should be able to still see the VOD for that. Um, <clears throat> I'll have a long version of that, probably, that will come out too, is me talking about it. Um, but, you know, that's kind of that. I want to redo my map of that. Somewhere around here, I have my hand-drawn version of it, where I actually did it by colored pencils okay guys so in this video you see me roll uh, four characters up you see me go through the whole process and that is uh, as I would say raw rules as written this is the journal idea of how you would do it um, uh, but I want to do this one more time uh, in this one I'm going to make a character and I'm going to uh, give it maybe a little bit of extra flair to it. We're going to make this one an elf. I'm going to go in there with the concept of the character I want to make versus rolling the dice to see what I get. Um, this elf will probably fill in initially as the magic user, um, but if characters pass away and uh, I have to replace them, then I will go ahead and replace them with uh, new characters, and if I happen to get a, a magic user, then the elf will become more of a melee. And we'll explore that type of thing as we go. So that's going to be coming up in a future video. Look for part two of character creation for uh, this series. I'll have the series in the title. <clears throat> and we'll go from there. All right. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what I got wrong so I can fix it. And keep rolling those dice. Bye.